My heart is crying, crying. Lonely teardrops. My pillow never dry up from lonely teardrops. Come home, come home, come home. Hello. I'm Marie, the host of Vinyl City Broadcasting, your transit express to rock and roll trivia. Our special guest today is Bobby Wilson, son of legendary R&B and soul singer Jackie Wilson. This is the graphic or branding that's being used to highlight Bobby's documentary, The Last Teardrop. Two men, one unbelievable story. Today, Bobby will tell us his unbelievable story, from foster care, to the military, to the world of entertainment in his documentary. Before we go over to our Zoom room for the interview, we want to play the trailer for you. Some have described it as mind-blowing, gripping, a must-see, and fascinating. Rico, run the trailer, please. His story is unbelievable. Uh, I wouldn't want to change a thing. It's just the way life unfolded. Bobby is an entertainer and a tribute artist. Do you, do you like Jackie Wilson? I'm doing a tribute to Jack. I kind of figured that. Jackie Wilson, one of rock and roll's first big names. Met Bobby, I thought. That's Jackie Wilson came back, you know. When I see him on stage, you get the chills. My path was paying tribute to his music for the last 25 years. He's a clone of Jackie. It makes me feel like I'm next to my father. It's like I'm in the room with him, the way he moves, the way he talks. There has to be a connection there somewhere. They knocked on my dressing room and said, hey, it's a guy that wants to see you. My whole world is about to change. I remember looking at the, my birth certificate for the first time in my life. I didn't know I was a foster child. You know, he was abandoned by his parents. When I read it, I was like in disbelief. Oh, oh. I am a son of Jackie Wilson's. I was amazed. He carries his father's legacy, and they never even met. I find that quite extraordinary myself. Everything Bobby knew suddenly switched. That was sort of the beginning of the tragedies in our family. I didn't realize the backlash that I would get. I kind of tried to stay away from Bobby. Bobby stayed in trouble. I didn't want it to be true. He takes over, just like Jackie did. He's the biggest fake there is. They're fighting him all the time. It aggravated me so much. It was tragedy after tragedy. She flew there alive, came back dead. Jackie Wilson died riddled with debt without even a headstone for his grave. I know something was put in his grave. He was poisoned. It was a circus. Business of rock and roll was not an innocent game. Did he get all the credit for it? I'm not too sure. I fight. Everybody got to fight. He went from the penthouse to the poorhouse. There's some good things about not knowing. No matter what, keep the memory going. When I see Jackie Wilson, I see a different man. I don't see me. I know who I am. What a story. You want to fly over to our Zoom room with me and we'll let Bobby himself tell us about his inspirational journey in the interview. Bobby Wilson, Mr. Entertainment. Bobby, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got introduced and started in the music world. Oh, man. Uh, now we're going back a ways. Um, <laughs> first, first, I'm glad to be here. Um, my story is on online, of course. Uh, you can always find me at uh, uh, bobbywilsonmusic.com. And then also there's a documentary out on me called The Last Teardrop. Oh, yes, we're going to talk about that a little bit, yeah, aren't we? Yes. And you got, yeah, you also have that on thelastteardrop.com. But, uh, I, you know, I, I always start off with uh, God 
my mom used to say when I was growing up, man plan and God laughs. And that's exactly what happened to me. I, uh, when I got out of high school, I decided to join the Navy. Mm-hmm. And my, my, my career was going to be 30 years in the Navy as an officer, retired fat, dumb, and happy by myself, one of those luxury RVs, oh. and drive around. <laughs> <laughs> and drive around Canada and uh, United States. That was my plan. Mm-hmm. But ten, 10 years into the Navy, I had suffered kidney, kidney stones. I passed 10 of them. Oh. And that earned me a medical discharge. Oh, I see. So I, I was very unhappy about that. Uh, and um, and so I was hanging out in Hawaii, waiting on my discharge papers to go through, and singing at the officer's club karaoke with my military friends and some of my Hawaiian friends. I and uh, I was singing, you know, as recreation. Uh, I actually was going through divorce at the time and uh, that I was enjoying just singing karaoke and eating and drinking. And so uh, <laughs> um, that's how it started. Uh, oh. uh, a guy walked up to me named Peter Hernandez uh, from Brooklyn, said, hey, man, I like your voice. You got something there. Uh, we need a voice like yours on our group. We're a doo-wop group from Brooklyn. We're, we're in Waikiki every night. Come and check out the show. So I was like, all right, I'll check out your show. I wasn't sure if he knew what he was talking about singing because I was singing for fun, not for living. Uh, and so I went to check out his show, Love Notes, And it was a great show, seven guys and seven young ladies and a little boy named Bruno playing Baby Elvis in the show. Oh, Uh, Bruno, okay. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And so um, when I came to the show, he told me to come out back and meet the fellas, and I did, and then they auditioned me, which I didn't even know I was being auditioned. I just thought I was coming back there to meet them. Sure. And and they asked me to do a little bit of harmony with them, and I did. And they said, okay, can you show up here every night? Uh, we're seven nights a week, two shows a night. Can you do one? Uh, do that? I said, yeah, I can do that. Cause I was waiting on my, uh, waiting on my discharge papers. I see. It took a it took almost a year for me to get discharged. So I was working with the love notes while I was waiting to get discharged from the Navy. Or at the, at, that's when I fell in love with being on stage. Uh-huh. I didn't know that's where I was going to wind up or what that was what I was going to be. I just fell in love with it. And when I fell in love with it, I became quite devoted to it. I started taking vocal lessons, started losing weight, blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, uh, the slimmer I got and the more hair I grew, the more people yelled out, you look like Jackie Wilson. <laughs> and, and I was like, you know, so I grew up in the foster home. I, did, I didn't grow up with my biological parents. So I didn't know who my parents were. Uh <clears throat> So I grew up and I saw, so I'm doing the thing and people yelling, you like Jackie Wilson. And I'm like, great, because I, I didn't know what, who Jackie Wilson was or what he looked like. And um, so I did the thing. And uh, next thing I know, uh, Paul Revere, Paul Revere and the Raiders come to our show to see Bruno because little Bruno was killing it. He was killing the game at that time. He was uh, on a movie with Nicolas Cage and he, uh, uh, he, he was uh, like the star of Hawaii, six-year-old Elvis, uh, okay. youngest Elvis impersonator, Pretty youngest amazing. Elvis impersonator. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Was yeah. Peter- so, uh, so. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. Was Peter Hernandez um, Bruno's father? Yeah, he's Bruno, Bruno's dad. Oh, Bruno's Bruno. Bruno. Bruno's name is Peter Hernandez. Oh. That's his. That's his name. But um. Huh. Well, anyway, um. You know, I'm working with you know working with this kid, and and uh, I I thought he was a little star because he had the Michael Jackson appeal. I thought at six years old, seven years old, and uh, I remember telling his dad, I "said This kid is another Michael Jackson." And and uh, his father said, "Well, I hope so because that's my retirement plan." <laughs> <laughs> and, it, okay. and it worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, we all agree with you. <laughs> And it worked out. So anyway, uh, Paul Revere comes in to see Bruno because they start the Legends and Concerts show next door at the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. They have a big old, uh, have a big old uh, theater called the the Aloha Theater, 
and um, they they brought in the Legend Show, Personation Show. They wanted to see Bruno because they they heard you know he's the world's youngest Elvis impersonator, so they wanted to see him. Mm-hmm. And that's when Paul saw me. Oh. And Paul walked up to me and said, "Hey, Popper, you know who you look like?" I said, "Yeah, I get that all the time." He goes, "Well, you got you got to do an audition for me. You got to audition as Jackie Wilson. We don't have a Jackie Wilson." And I said, "Well, Paul, I'm I'm an artist. I'm not an impersonator." And he goes, well, I, I didn't tell you what I was going to pay you. And I went, oh, yeah, <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> so he said, come check out the show. Well, I avoided him for the longest. Because uh, I, I didn't know who Paul Revere was. I didn't know he was a rock and roll star. Yes. So, so uh, you know, as far as I know, he's some businessman that was opening the show. So anyway, um, Paul said, you got to come over and do it. And then after three times, I, I finally went and audition for them. They hired me on the spot. I remember telling Paul before I did the audition, I don't know how to do Jackie Wilson because there's no video on him. There's no pictures on him. All I found in the library was a, a paragraph. And and he says, he says, I've been talking to you for a while. I know who Jackie, I know Jackie Wilson. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to be you and just get up there and kill each one of those songs. Just sell you. If you sell you, you're selling Jackie Wilson. That's what Paul Revere told me. Yeah. So I said, okay, you know, and that's what I did. And next thing I know, he says, hey, I'm going to send you out to Atlantic City because Jackie Wilson was king of Atlantic City. Oh. I fly out to, yeah. yeah, Well, he said Jackie Wilson was king of New York, is what he said. Oh. You know, Jackie Wilson was king of New York. So I'm sending you out to, I'm going to send you out to Atlantic City show. Sure enough, I never, you know, I've been entertaining in front of Japanese and Koreans and and Chinese. So there's no reaction. There's no reaction when I walk on stage. (laughs) But when I walked on stage the very first time in Atlantic City, I had never heard this before. (gasps) That's what I heard. (laughs) They thought you were seeing Jackie Wilson, huh? (laughs) Yeah, I had never heard that before. Oh, my. (laughs) Because, you know, I was in Hawaii, you know. <clears throat> laid back culture. China, if, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's not that. It's it's the, the our audience was ninety percent Asian. Oh. And I guess even though they knew the music, they didn't know who, who Jackie Wilson was. I see. So they they enjoyed the music. I sold them. I mean, they yeah. were singing and dancing and clapping along, but uh, it was never the reaction I got when I got to New York. When I got to New York, it was like a ghost that walked on stage. <laughs> Uh, and when I started singing, they went crazy. They started standing up and wow. dancing along. And and in those, and it's a showroom, so they made them the people sit down. They walk up, sit down. You got, you can't dance. Sit down. What do you mean I can't dance? You know, these are New Yorkers. What do you mean I can't dance? Who are you talking to? You know, you know we know I'm, something about New York. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wow, this place is crazy. You know, <laughs> uh, but but anyway, that was that was the beginning for me. That's when I, I I met the, hold on, my car is getting hot. Oh. That's when I met the Four Tops and the, um, and they the ones who went crazy over me because they were watching me and um, they asked the entertainment director to bring me up and introduce them to them because they were doing corporate shows uh, in valleys where we were playing. Nobody knew the Four Tops were in the building. And that's when they were all alive, Levi, Obi, Duke, and uh, Lawrence. So it was, it was, uh, it was crazy because the entertainment director said, Hey, do you know the four tops? And I said, Oh, yeah, those are great guys. He says, No, do you really know them? I said, Oh, no, I never met them. He said, Well, they, they know you. And I'm like, What? He says, Follow me. And he took me up and introduced me to them. They introduced me to the Wilson family. And year then it took a number of years before I did the DNA and and uh, now I'm carrying the banner uh, and keeping Jackie's music alive as well as my own music and uh, being able to perform and entertain and remind people of what a great legend Jackie Wilson was. Yes, yes. Well, we're so glad you are doing that, like you said, for yourself and and for your father and. Uh, right. It was your story so interesting. One chapter closed in your life, another opened up, and look how it opened up, starting with 
Bruno Mars and his father, and then Paul Revere and the Four Tops, all helping along. Yeah. The I had a lot of, I tell my, because I didn't have a real father growing up, my mother, my foster mother, uh, her husband died when I was six years old and she never remarried. So I had a lot of mentors that came along. I had preachers from my Southern Baptist church that saw something in me. And they would make me stand in front of the church and, and pray. And then I had, uh, I, then as I got older in, in, in especially in the business, I had a lot of mentors, uncles and aunties like Dionne Warwick. I consider her auntie and, and like uh, Tony Orlando is an uncle and Joey D is oh, an uncle and oh George Benson is an uncle to me. Uh, uh, Billy Davis, of course, who introduced me to everybody. He he's passed on, but he was definitely a father figure to me. Paul Revere became a fa father figure to me, along with Bruno's uh, Bruno's uh, dad became a brother to me I see. you know so i just had a lot of mentors and leaders that stepped in uh and i i think it's all designed by god to help me and guide me along the way as i got to where i got and then I, of course i became very close to my brother thor uh, you know i met a lot of my my siblings but thor is the one i became the closest to and uh he passed away in 2018 i miss him dearly uh he um he had a heart attack in his sleep Oh, oh, yeah, he was he was forty six years old. Yeah. So you know, so, so a lot of my uh, my siblings have passed, but um, you know, I'm keeping it going, keeping the music going, and uh, and uh, the siblings that are here supporting me, uh, it's great. You know, we we uh, try to do different events uh, to keep uh, awareness of Jackie Wilson and his music. And every show I do, I always seem to pick up new fans and new friends. So it's awesome. Well, continue on, Bobby. Now you had, oh, mentioned, yeah. you had mentioned your documentary, The Last Two, yeah. two Men, yeah, the last two. One Unbelievable Story. And some have described it as your personal journey from foster care to the military to the world of entertainment. So would you like to tell us a little more about your um, documentary? I think you just did it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then we have that covered. We have that covered. All right. I think you just did it. You know, um, uh, it, it, it documents me, you know, my growing up in, in the foster care, they mm -hmm. interviewed all my siblings, uh, a lot of the siblings in, in the foster care. And my mother, uh, they just missed her because she passed away just before they started uh, oh. started the documentary. She was 94 when she passed. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. yeah. And so, uh, Good long life. so, and then, you know, and then, um, then they went into the entertainment community and people I've worked with an impression, the impression I've left on people and impressions that they got from me, things, things of that nature, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so it goes, it, it goes, uh, it, it's, it's very intriguing. And uh, but I, what I want to do is to bring awareness to foster care because they have us when I was in, we had to, we age out at 18. After 18 years old, they put you out. You're on your own. A lot of the kids wind up back in, in jail or in some type of institution, uh, 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 skid row, just bombs on the streets um, because there's no avenues for them. Uh, I wanted to petition to the court or to the state or to the Senate or to the House floor that we come up with a law where we take care of our foster children a little bit better and, and, and instead of them aging out at 18, have them age out at 22. By then, they are adults. They have some form of direction of what they want to do with their lives and, and they may be motivated or at least have been pointed into a way whereas they can build a life for themselves. Yeah. and start a family for themselves. The biggest thing about foster care and foster children is letting go of all the baggage that comes along with it. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of baggage because uh, you're wondering about who your parents were, why did they let you go? Why did they abandon you? Uh, why you, you know, why did you come in the world this way? It's a lot of garbage you take with you. If you don't have a good foundation, a good home, somebody who can help you 
and and help you steer uh, in the right direction, you can get lost in this big world, and you can get lost real fast. So um, I like to see I like to see programs put together where it can help foster kids and lost kids. You know, uh, foster, fostering kids is great. Uh, however, it, it is not enough. Uh, they, and they need to have a sense of purpose, a reason why they're here and what they're doing and what they're here for. I, I, when I meet ch people and the children and foster kids all the time, I tell them, I said, don't worry about your past. Don't worry about your parents. God gave you the breath to be in this world. So decide what you want to do and do it. Decide which direction you want to go and go. Don't depend on anybody to give you a handout or to help you. I said, I said now, yeah, we'll work together uh, and, and we can make it happen. Just like the Bible said, you make one step, I'll, God will make two. But definitely, to, to me, my thing is depend on God, ask God for direction, and go for it. You're going, to, you're going to get hurt along the way. You're going to fall along the way. But you have to keep getting up. You have to keep shaking that dirt off your shoulders and move into the next phase of life, whatever that is. Because that's, so, uh, yeah, that's what life so, is. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's my... Uh, um, when they act, when they came to me and say, "Hey, we want to tell your story," I say, "Well, it's great that I'm Jackie Wilson's son, but the the bigger thing is, I want to help foster kids. I want to help kids, you know, find their way if they can." Yeah, uh, we see you are mentor I, I, mentoring these kids, uh, and then um, well, as much well, you as know, one of the go yeah. Well, one of the main reasons why I joined the Navy is because. The state of South Carolina took care of me when I was born and, and when I was given to my foster mother, I had uh, a lot of medical problems. I had rickets at the bones. They had to break my legs and straighten my legs. They had to operate on my feet and straighten my feet. Uh, they had to work on me because I had underdeveloped lungs and intestines. So I had a lot of stuff going on. And the doctors kept saying I wouldn't make it as a, as a child. They, they didn't think I would see my teen years. Oh my goodness. So I was in and out the hospital all the way up until I was 12, 13 years old. Once I got over that, uh, then I wanted to, you know, I was like a regular child. I wanted to play football and basketball and I wanted to be, you know, active and I wanted to participate. And, and, and then when the T, uh, I do remember in high school when drama came, I wanted to be in the drama classes and I, I did some, I did some plays and I did the, the musicals, uh, and I didn't realize that that was a part of me. I just knew Artists. that I wanted to do it. Yeah, I just wanted to do it when I was in high school. When I got out of high school, then I said, okay, it's time to be a man. And I joined the Navy. Yeah. And and uh, that was that. But to me, the Navy was the best thing I could have ever done for myself. It had structure in your life. and uh, it, gave me, it gave me great structure. And I, was tr and I have two boys, and I want both of them to join the military. They, they opted out. But I thought the military would give them a jump, uh, a jump start on life. I thought it would, it would help them to, you know, find a direction, what they want to do and where they want to be in life. Yes. And to watch them struggle on their own on what they want to do and what they want to be. It's hard to sit back and watch because, you know, these kids are strong. They want to do what they want to do. <laughs> you can't, you can't tell them. They yeah. got to make the mistakes. Well, that's true. They, they have, they have to decide. Yeah. You can't tell them. You can't tell them. They have to make their own mistakes. So I let them make these mistakes. And then he goes, Dad, I, I messed up. I said, well, it's part of life. You know? Absolutely. You know? and, and I warned them. I said, I told my, 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 my son, who's now 28, I said, when he was 17, I said, listen, I said, I know you don't want to join the military, but I think if you join the Navy or the Air Force, it's going to get you years ahead of, of where you want to be. Just I said, just do two years, three years. Oh, I'm not going to do that, Dad. I'm going to college. Well, they went to college, and you know, and uh, but you know, they dropped out and they went through the workforce. And now, ten years later, he goes, I can't believe I'm 27. I said, I told you it's going to come fast. <laughs> it's it's going to come fast. I said, next thing you know, you're going to be 37. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. I said, well, if you want to, if you want to breathe and live, you're going to be 37. <laughs> I said, so I said, so come up with a five-year plan. Where will you want to be in five years? I said, it's very real. 
If you don't do it, you're going to lollygag around, and then 10 years going to go by, and you go, oh, I didn't do nothing. That's exactly right. You didn't do anything. Well, you're, so trying, anyway, you're trying to give them good advice, so, but like you well, said. Well, because I learned, I, I, but this is advice coming from somebody who's been through it. Well, <laughs> you know, Sarah, I've been through it. it. So, so that's why I'm trying to share it, you know. Okay. So, so, so all that you're doing with the foster care in, uh, is it called the Foster Care Institute? Uh, no, uh, just the, just the foster, just foster care. Oh, foster um, care. Okay. Yeah, we, what we do is what we've been doing was connecting with the local foster care uh, bi businesses in each city, nice. and uh, and that's when we would have a showing, and then I would do a Q and A after each showing. Okay. Of well, the movie. So, uh, but we. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah we're supposed to be uh, headed towards um steam streaming now so uh it'll be streaming soon oh good okay well <laughs> um we looked at your schedule and i we think you and the energizer bunny have something in common <laughs> yeah. yeah i got a few dates i got a that's, few dates well, that's but, what, that's but it's, it's a blessing it is it certainly is now, um, yeah. when you go out on stage, look at the audience that come to see you perform, what do you want your audience to take away with them after your performance? I just want them to feel good about themselves and good about the music and that they had a good time and that we went down memory lane and I hope I sparked some great memories and uh, put some, uh, warm their hearts and put some smiles uh. in them. <laughs> and for, for those that lost, lost loved ones that love the music, that seems to always come up that their loved ones were there with them. Uh, and so if we can just get that spark going of love and loving one another as you love yourself, I'm happy. Excellent. Well spoken. Now, before we close, Bobby, would you consider giving us a little acapella for our audience? Maybe. No. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then, then we'll I have to prepare. Okay. I have to. All right, all right. Here's a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Your love is lifting me higher than I have been lifted before. So keep it up, quench my desire, and I'll be at your side forevermore. That's that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> And we appreciate I don't, that. I don't want to scare anybody. I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> well, any any final thoughts, Bobby, to finish off this interview? No, no, no. Just go to my website, uh, Bobby Wilson, Bobby Wilson Music, or I'm online on TikTok. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Bobby Wilson uh, Music, and you can find me. You can Google me, read my story, check my check out the movie. You'll be able to download it soon, so you can stream it and watch it. And uh, I'll hopefully I'll be a town near you. Uh, um, I'm playing uh, a lot in New York. I got a, uh, I'm playing at Bayshore, this place uh, called Bolton Theater. I'm going to be there April the 26th. I'm really looking for a lot of uh, new faces and newcomers because I've never played there before. Ah. So if you can just post that out, Bolton. Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, po we'll post all sorts of things at the April, end, at the April end. 26th. This uh, next weekend, I will be in uh, Bel Air, right outside Beverly Hills, at uh, Al Herbert's Vibrato uh, Jazz Club. I'll be there uh, Friday night, March the eighth, seven, seven and nine, uh, two shows. Come on out! We're gonna have a good time. Okay, thanks, Bobby. Well, you're yeah, definitely yeah. quite a talent, and you're keeping the legacy of your father alive. And we appreciated this interview. So no problem. just keep on performing. We'll be flying along with you. And uh, before, Thank we you. <laughs> before we let you go, we wanted to show our appreciation for doing this interview with us. So Rico designed a mock-up billboard cover specifically for you. Give me a moment and oh. I'll post it on the screen so you and everyone else can see. Just click once. Okay. Okay. No share. Should be okay. popping up there. Okay, should be on. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Is that okay? I love it. <laughs> probably, probably you gotta, you gotta, you gotta send that to me. I gotta use that one. Yeah, we, we're gonna send that to you. We're gonna mail it to you. 
And uh, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. I see you like it. So like, oh, I got to put that. I'm putting that in the frame. All right. <laughs> like it says, last teardrop, two men, one unbelievable story. Um, and your documentary, The Last Teardrop. Um, some That's have beautiful. As this, they've described it as your personal journey from foster care to the military to the world of entertainment. Bobby tells us That's it. an inspirational story. So, um, <clears throat> and it's exciting, mesmerizing, and magical. So let me uh, click back to the main screen. <laughs> All right. So All you're right. Okay. <laughs> but as we said, we're going to make arrangements to have it mailed out to you. We'll stay in touch with you via social media. So you can keep okay. us abreast of any new endeavors, shows, events that you're going to be a part of. And we'd love to see you in person. <laughs> okay. I will. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful interview. Very inspirational, Bobby. Thank, thank you, guys. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. So now we're back in the VCB studio. Three words describe that interview. Exciting, mesmerizing, and magical. So let's review just a few highlights of the interview. Being in the foster care system for so long, he now wants to bring awareness to foster care. And what a worthwhile endeavor that is. Bobby said every show he goes to, he picks up new fans and friends. He can add Rico and I to that list. How about when he walked out on stage in Atlantic City and the crowd let out with a loud gasp and they wanted to get up and dance. You can't keep a New Jersey, New York crowd seated, can you? So how about that acapella he did spontaneously to close out the interview? Lifting you higher and higher was icing on the cake, wasn't it? Bobby will also keep us abreast of any new endeavors or projects or shows that he is working on or involved with this year. His tour schedule is on his website. So check it out to see if he will be appearing in a city near you. Anyone in the entertainment industry that sees this interview and would like to get in touch with Bobby for your next event we'll post all his contact information on our last slide. We hope that all of our subscribers and friends out there enjoyed this interview as much as we did. Bookmark our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future interviews and shows. We wanted to end the show by playing a couple of songs that Bobby sang on a doo generation show. Lonely Teardrops, and Higher and Higher. After you watch his performance, I'm sure you all will be flying a little bit higher. Rico, play the Doo-Wop Generations video. Just give 
is crying, crying.